All right, Jacob Cordero here, cookwarejunkies.com. We're going to be running you through a test kitchen to be able to reveal the best electric skillet. We've selected six electric skillets based on a couple of different factors. Uh, one, uh, if they were a top selling skillet on Amazon. Uh, also their review rating as far as the star rating goes on Amazon. And also if it was a top search for skillet on Google searches. So out of the six that we've chosen, they all range from $25 to $100. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Zojirushi, which is a $100 skillet, uh, the Presto, which is a $56 skillet, uh, the DeLonghi, a $42 skillet, the Elite, a $40 skillet, Copper Chef, like a $40 skillet as well, and also the small little Nesco, which is a $25 skillet. You're going to get a whole wide range of skillets that we're going to be taking a look at, and we're going to run them through a series of about six tests over the next 20 minutes. Um, so if the video seems a little long for you, go ahead and look below. There's a table of contents that should jump you right to the different parts that you might be interested in most. Um, after each one of the tests is complete, we'll go ahead and come back with some results and explain which one we felt performed the best in that test. And at the end, we'll go ahead and summarize that data for you and I'll be back to explain which one we picked as our number one best electric skillet. Uh, so we're going to be running through a saute test, a fry test, a sear test. Uh, we'll be cooking pancakes, we'll be doing a fish poach, and we'll also be taking a real close look at the ergonomics. So we're going to just jump right into our kitchen over here. Um, again, if you want to take a look down below, uh, there's several links. Um, if you want to get a detailed look at each one of these skillets, like if you want to see the unboxing of them, um, a, you know, explanation of them, close-ups of the, of the actual parts and everything, go ahead and click. We have a video on each one of these skillets individually uh, where we break down all that data. And also there's a link to our full article on our website that has all the stills and all the data, uh, all the technical stuff if you prefer to read instead of watching the video through. We're going to take you right over to our kitchen if you find this useful. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll be back at the end to summarize our results. This is our first test. It's going to be uh, just kind of to see how how well these things heat up, how quick they heat up. Uh, so we put a stick of butter in each one of them. And so far, uh, the winner as far as how well they've heated up is the DeLonghi here and the little portable uh, Nesco down at the end. Um, so what we're going to be doing is sauteing some vegetables in here. Uh, very common use uh, for an electric skillet. Uh, so we want to see how well uh, we get our vegetables to saute, how quick they do and uh, we'll be back with our results on that in just a second. Okay, so we're about halfway through our first test. Uh, so far, that last three that we had up here, the DeLonghi was pretty much the so far in the lead. Uh, it, it heated up the quickest, it gave us a nice sear uh, on the veggies, and it also finished about five minutes before. And then we also had the last one on the end, which was the uh, portable one, uh, the Nesco. That one ended up just getting eliminated, so it's not going to actually make it through the other you know, three tests that we have here uh, still to go. Uh, mostly because the cord kept coming loose uh, where the uh, meat probe or the thermometer probe goes into the device. And so it continued to turn itself off uh, intermittently about two th times through the cook. And uh, at the second point we just kind of eliminated it all together. Okay, we're back after our first test. The Elite um, and also the Del Longhi, which is there at the end. Uh, did the best in not only uh, sauteing, but they were both actually the quickest in the bunch. Um, so the n next closest was about five minutes after. One thing to note is the Copper Chef uh, never really sauteed anything, uh, never really got to a uh, browning point. Uh, so we pretty much gave it an extra five minutes after the last one had completed and uh, just assumed it wasn't going to really get much better and we weren't willing to wait around for it. Um, so another thing to note on the Copper Chef is since it does have such a smooth surface and platform, it also is not very conducive to a nice browning and a nice sear. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, you want to definitely uh, consider. Uh, the Zojirucci, uh did okay. That's probably our third, uh, third place. And then followed by uh, the Presto here. Hi, this is Nathan Crane for CookwareJunkies.com. We've just run a test on our five remaining electric skillets and making french fries. We, did, we double fried them, starting with a first run at 325, a 10 minute steam, and then fry them until they're golden brown and delicious at 375. 
Uh, here are the results. The DeLonghi was probably the best of the lot. It produced delicious fries. Uh, although we had a little bit of trouble, it would drop in temperature when the fries went in, but would never quite recover enough. The fries were, however, delicious. Uh, the Presto, uh, also very good. It had a little bit of trouble getting up to temperature, but the fries were, but the fries were excellent. The Elite had the potential to be the best, but it ran into trouble because it tended to, over, to go over its temperature. We would set it to 325 and it would roll up to about 335. Uh, we took it to 375, it wound up at nearly 400. So the end result of the fries, uh, they were wonderfully brown, but didn't quite have the crisp crust we were looking for. Still, it seems that that could be something that we could dodge around just by setting it low and keeping a close eye on the temperature. Uh, the Zodurushi produced probably the best fries, but it was a tough fight to get it there. Uh, the temperature was consistently low, and we kept having to raise it and raise it to get up to par. But uh, it held the pot held on to the heat probably as well as any other as any of them. And so, with less temperature drop, we wound up with the best, crispiest fries out of that one. The loser, unfortunately, was Copper Chef, which never made it uh, up to temperature. Uh, we set it to 325; it never made it over about 270. Uh, we cranked it up until it finally got up to about 315. It took about 10 minutes to get a really unsatisfactory first cook. Then we cranked it up to max. It never made it past about 325, which led to greasy, chewy, disgusting fries. So the Copper Chef is not recommended at this point, but we'll see how it fares as we continue to our next tests. This test is just basically going to be about the sear. We want to see how well we can get a sear on a steak. Um, so we're not really concerned necessarily on how well it cooks it all the way through, um, but really on that outer crust area, how well it's searing on each side. All right, we're back from eating steak. Had a chance to test how well all five of these did as it relates to the sear. Um, as far as uh, which one had the best out of the five that we reviewed at the best uh, crust, I would say that the Presto um, definitely came in probably uh, first place, followed by DeLonghi. Then I'd say the Elite and the Zorishi came in right at pretty much the same. Uh, Copper Chef actually uh, in this one picked up a couple of points um, because it did actually get a nice crust on both sides um, while it took about three times as long. So there you have it. We're back with our review of the electric skillets after the pancake test, and the results are all pretty good. People love to use electric skillets to make pancakes, and all of these produced a credible pancake. The top tier is the DeLonghi and the Presto, which produced a, ni a nice color, uh, a, good in a good interior that's well done, and a nice bit of uh, color and flavor on the outside. Uh, the Elite is in the next tier down. Its problem is that it runs way too hot, so while the pancakes were done very, very quickly, uh, you have a choice of either not being quite done in the middle or being a little overdone on the outside and kind of leathery. Uh, at the bottom tier, uh, the Zojirushi and the Copper, and the copper Chef, uh, which both produced not nearly enough browning. They, were, they topped out at blonde and the interior texture was doughy and not the best. Now, one issue with the Zojirushi and the Copper Chef is that they run at a lower temperature uh, for any given thermostat setting. So we set all of these to 300 degrees, but the actual temperatures varied between 360 degrees and 415 degrees. So the Copper Chef and the Zojirushi, which ran at lower temperatures, took a bit of a hit just from that. We cranked them both up to max, uh, for, which is about 425 for each of them, and the pancake that was produced both times was the equal of either of the best pancakes. So part of what we're looking at here is just a question of lower temperature producing worse results. The upside is, if you purchase the Copper Chef or the Zojirushi, you can get a good pancake by turning it up to max. The downside is your maximum temperature is much lower than the other models. Okay, we're back here with CookwareJunkies.com testing electric skillets. This time we're going to test the low temperature performance of these five skillets. Uh, to do that, we're going to poke some tilapia in milk. We've got seasoned, seasoned milk and some onions. Uh, first, we're going to bring it up to a simmer on all of them, and then we'll turn it down to the lowest setting and see how well it can maintain a low poach. 
Uh, we'll be testing the temperature throughout and see how well they maintain the temperature so that we get perfectly poached fish. The goal is that you'll be able to set it and forget it, uh, prepare some perfectly poached fish uh, while preparing side dishes and not have to worry that you're overcooking it. Hi, we're back with the results of our fish poaching test on our batch of electric skillets here. The clear winner is the Zojiruchi, uh, which has held a steady simmer of about 140, uh, varying between 120 and 150. It's done it steadily, and it will do a great job for holding, holding fish at 140. Next best, uh, surprisingly, it's the Elite. Every other test, it has run super duper hot, but it's demonstrated that it's got a cool side too, and has been holding relatively steady 140, although with a wider range than the Zojiruchi. Uh, it's also a little bit tricky to work the controls on that one. There's just a big band uh, below 200, and you just have to find the right spot. It's not automatic, but it did do its job. Also up there in, the, in that same class is the Copper Chef, uh, which was able to hold a reasonable 140, but with a little bit, also with a little bit wider range. Uh, we had to, we wound up having to pull the fish a little bit earlier just because it kept walking up and up as the temp, as the temperature high end rose. Uh, the next tier down, the Presto, uh, it was, it has a warm setting, and we were able to hold, able to hold a poach, but it was 160. We could got, could not get it down below 140. So ultimately, it was a failure, but not a horrible one. Uh, we had to pull the fish early. It tasted good, but it was not the plan. And finally, down at the bottom, the DeLonghi. Uh, below 200, as best as we can tell, it's just off. Uh, there is a box that seems like it could be a warm setting, but it just goes down and keeps going down without, act, without the heating element ever coming back on. So the DeLonghi is unfortunately a fail. And now we're going to take a bit of a look at the ergonomics and design of the skillets and see how see how they stack up. Uh, the Zojiruchi, uh, our first our first model here is a round. It is uh, nine inches in diameter. The surface is fairly non-stick. We had to scrub it a little bit on some of the messier things. It had the tightest range of temperature. Uh, it was it was holding about uh, 15 degrees difference between the sides and the center, uh, and that held true at the at the higher levels as well. Uh, its thermostat was probably the truest. It ran about uh, 30 to 50 degrees hot of where it claimed to be, but that was probably the best of the lot in that regard. Now the DeLonghi uh, is a rec is a rectangle. It's one piece, uh, diagonal of 15 inches. When it came to cleaning, it needed a little bit of scrubbing, but nothing over the top. Its handles are the best of the bunch. Uh, even when it was rocket hot, we were able to pick it up by the handles with no problems whatsoever. Uh, when it came to heat, uh, this had reasonable distribution. Uh, it was varying about uh, 30 to 40 degrees uh, side, to, side to side to center. Uh, and that, although that got a little bit more pronounced as we got up to the higher temperature. Uh, now the Copper Chef uh, is a square, uh, 12 and a half inches uh, on the diagonal, and its top part comes off, uh, which is nice for cleaning. Cleaning is its best function, which unfortunately isn't cooking, but it just cleaned off perfectly with just water. Uh, so the non-stick coating is very, very good. Uh, for heat, it is rel it was relatively consistent side to side as well, as with a small size. It was about 15, 20 degrees, uh, different center to side to side, uh, although that got a little bit worse as, the t as we got to the high temperature. Uh, it's, its thermostat was more accurate than most. Uh, it's about 50 degrees hot most of the time. Uh, which is about average, maybe a little bit good. Uh, the Elite uh, is rectangle uh, with pebbled surface, uh, which has been up and down. Uh, it was a little bit of it was a little bit of trouble on the sear, and it caught a little bit of caught a little bit of material when it came to the fish and needed a little extra work to get scrubbed out. Although nothing unreasonable. Want to hope that it uh, wears a little better than the others, but well, can't say for sure right now. 
Uh, its handles were a little were a little bit troublesome. Uh, they were a little a little hot, especially on the thermostat side when it was at its highest point. The Elite has a something that could be either a pour spout or a vent. Uh, if it's a vent, I hope it's a good one because it's a terrible pour spout. Uh, it was almost easier to pour out of one of the other corners than to try that one. It's got a 15 inch diagonal, uh, making it one of the largest ones in the test. Uh, temperature wise, the Elite was our hottest one. Uh, it was running a whopping 100 to 125 degrees over, its, over what the thermostat said. And it had a fair amount of variation side to side. Uh, about uh, 50 degrees uh, side to side to center. Uh, that's pretty That's pretty rough right there. Uh, however, it did surprise us in the fish test by being able to maintain a relatively low temperature. So I guess you never can tell. Uh, finally, that takes us to the Presto. Uh, the Presto is another rectangle uh, with a 16 inch diagonal. Uh, however, the Presto has an extra feature that the frame can unhook, fold up, and rest in the um, pan itself. Uh, so that's good for storage. However, uh, the, those handles then felt a little bit cheap uh, and uh, shifty when we were trying to move it around. Uh, it was not a comfortable experience when that was full of 375 degree oil to pick that up by those handles. And they felt they worked fine, but they felt like they could have gone and I'd be just as happy to have let that sit. Uh, the Presto does have an excellent pour spout uh, that made cleaning up, cleaning up the oil very easy. As for other cleanup, uh, it cleaned out with water very nicely, uh, didn't need hardly any scrubbing at all. Uh, for heat control, this probably had the, this probably had a, one of the wider swings. It was up about uh, 60 degrees, 60, sometimes 70 degrees center side to side. So the heat control was not super great. Uh, also the thermostat was off by, wow, uh, 100, 125 degrees. Uh, same as the Elite, uh, so this thing ran hot and ran hot all the time. All right, Jake and Cordero here. Thanks for watching, and we're going to reveal our final results as to which one we like the best and which one we feel you should spend your hard-earned money on when it comes to an electric skillet and some of the factors that you might want to consider. Uh, so starting out uh, with our last place uh, is the Nesco that never made it through our test, and we kind of explained quickly that uh, right at the beginning in that first test there was a short in the cord uh, that just kind of allowed didn't allow us to even complete that first test because it kept shutting off. So we went ahead and just eliminated it entirely rather than going out and getting another Nesco. Uh, so next we had the Copper Chef. Uh, Copper Chef, uh, interesting concept, uh, comes in at about $40 so it's right in, the, right in almost like the mid-range of all the other skillets that we reviewed. Uh, the Copper Chef you know, like at every stage seemed to just kind of let us down. Uh, it did okay during the, the test that we put it through on like the fish poaching, did okay at the sear, um, but all in all it just really didn't stack up to all the hype that it had on the like the infomercials and that kind of thing. The biggest thing with the Coffer Chef is it's like that non-stick surface which is its best feature. Um, so aside from that we really didn't find much other silver lining uh, in the Copper Chef and we would definitely not recommend it at the $40 price point. Next on our list was the Zojirushi, uh, came in fourth. Uh, the Zojirushi had a couple of things against it right off the bat. Uh, it's $100 and then also it's not quite um, what we would consider an electric skillet. So when it came to putting it through a lot of the traditional tests that we had set up for our other electric skillets, it just really missed the mark. Um, and I think it's just because it's kind of something on its own. Um, very interesting, not a bad product. It's got quality build to it. Um, it's got a nice thick uh, skillet uh, that definitely holds the heat in well and once it heats up it kind of stays hot. Uh, it also has that nice breakaway cord because the thermostat's not actually built into the uh, cord itself. It's actually built right into the unit. So uh, basically if you have that on the tabletop uh, since it's got that magnet breakaway, if somebody were to trip over it, uh, it's not going to be a complete disaster. And additionally, um, the, the, the design overall, as well as the aesthetics of it, uh, were really good. And it did great at fish poaching and holding that heat um, right at that 140 temperature that we were looking at. So all in all, uh, Zojirushi, maybe for another reason, but certainly not for the $100 price point uh, if you're looking for an electric skillet, especially because of the size of the skillet and the cooking the cooking area. Uh, next was the Presto at number three, comes in at $56 or so. Uh, the Presto really did well in a couple of areas like the pancakes, uh, that made our best pancakes. 
Um, the searing on the steak was pretty good. Uh, the only issue is that on the fish poaching, it wouldn't go below like 160, so it really didn't have a chance to win in that area. It cleaned out really easy, and then it has the fold-away handles. So you can purchase two different models of the Presto. Uh, the one with the fold-away handles is about $10 more than the one with the static handles on it. Um, so if you're going to be purchasing based on storage and being able to put it away and fold it up, then the Presto is probably the model for you. Um, it was a little bit awkward for us with, you know, when we had the Presto, I believe that we were using, we tried to move it when we had the hot oil in there and it just felt a little shaky, a little bit awkward and um, I, I'm not sure that I would really recommend um, the fold away handles on it uh, if you're going to be doing things like uh, frying in it. Um, so next up we had the um, Elite uh, that came in as uh, second place uh, at $40. Really the Elite could have made our first place spot except for the fact that it ran hot and it ran hot all the time. So basically what that meant is that in a lot of the tests that we performed if we did not compensate for it running hot it, it did not perform as well as it could have in the test. Um, but when we, when we say we're running hot, we're looking at probably, at one point it was like 120 degrees over, and then also that thermostat side of the skillet got hot, hotter than the other side, which also heated up that handle when we kicked it up to like 400, 425, and it was running at like, I think we had it at like 520. Uh, or 510 is what we clocked it at. And then the other thing was, because of the honeycomb bottom sur pebbled surface that the Elite has, it was a little bit more difficult to actually clean it out. Um, and so I know that's important to a lot of you, how well does it clean? While it is dishwasher safe, um, you do end up, if you are gonna clean that by hand, are gonna end up scrubbing that with more than just you know running some hot water and a quick little rinse on there. Um, so that's probably the main reasons why the Elite finished at our second uh, spot at 40, at $40. And then our number one spot came in, uh, the DeLonghi. So that's the $42 model. The DeLonghi excelled at every one of our tests except for the fish poaching. Um, we couldn't get it down to that 160, so it just wasn't able to maintain the temperature there uh, because we couldn't get it there at all. Um, so that's the only downside on the DeLonghi. If you're looking for a skillet that you can do poaching in, then I recommend going with the Elite. Uh, however, the DeLonghi um, also cleaned out very easily, uh, had a very nice cooking area, handles on there were very sturdy, nice and, nice and big handles. Um, the only area where I think it struggled um, was on the, on the heating up process for the sear. It took a little longer uh, than the rest of the skillets in the test. Uh, but aside from that, um, it, it, it ran great and the DeLonghi is going to be our number one pick. So I hope you've enjoyed this test kitchen that we've performed here out of our home for you guys. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And then again, if you are going to make a purchase, there's links below. You can link over to our article as well. Um, and check out some of our other videos for our other test kitchens as well as our other product reviews. Uh, thanks so much. Jacob Cordero here, cookwarejunkies.com.